chapter 9, part 8. In this video, we're going to look at how to determine if you have an E1 or E2 reaction. Now, the first step is to just to check and make sure that you have a good leaving group. You're also going to want to determine the substitution of the substrate. Okay, so if it's primary and it's not benzylic or allylic, it's easily E2. And if it's secondary or tertiary, we have to look at the other factors. Then you're going to look at the solvent type. A polar aprotic solvent is going to promote E2. A polar protic solvent is going to promote E1. And you'll also look at the base strength. And if you have a strong base, it will be an E2 reaction. And a weak base will be E1. And then finally, you want to look at the base concentration. A higher concentration solution will gonna, is going to favor E2, right? Because you see E increased concentration that is going to promote E2, which is bimolecular. A low concentration or dilute reaction is going to favor E1. Okay, so let's go through some iClicker questions so you can practice these. So go ahead and pause your video and see if you can identify the mechanism of this reaction. Okay, hopefully you were able to correctly identify that this is an E2 elimination reaction because we have a strong base. Um, this is potassium T-butoxide, so there's a negative charge on the O. This is a localized charge, strong base, and then DMF is a polar aprotic solvent. Why don't you go ahead and give this one a try? And you're just trying to identify the major product of the reaction. Okay, hopefully you correctly identified B. Um, there are two beta hydrogens that can be pulled off. If you pull off the hydrogen on this carbon indicated here, that would give you A. And if you pull the beta hydrogen off of this carbon indicated here, that's going to give you B. Um, a is the least substituted, so B is going to be the major product. Okay, here's another iClicker question. In this one, try to identify both the product and the mechanism. So go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, hopefully you correctly identified B as the correct answer. This is an E1 elimination reaction because we have a weak base. Um, we also have a polar protic solvent as the solvent. So this is going to go through an E1 mechanism. Both of those things are going to promote E1. And you'll notice that there are two beta hydrogens. The beta hydrogen, if you pull it on this carbon, if you pull it off, is going to lead to A. And if you pull off this one, this will lead to B. And what's going to happen is that you are going to get um, the more substituted alkane product. So this is going to be your major product. And actually, if you think about the mechanism a little bit, this is actually going to give you a secondary carbocation. You'll probably end up with a hydride shift to a more stable tertiary carbocation. And then actually, the hydrogen on this carbon that just shifted will get deprotonated to give you the alkene. OK, let's do some more clicker questions. So go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Again, I try to identify the mechanism and the product. Hopefully you correctly identified D. Now this is the weird situation that I talked about where you start to have an extremely bulky substrate. And I started to, I tried to make it super obvious here with the big bulky groups. Um, you also have a very bulky base here. There's a negative charge in this nice nitrogen. And these are two isopropyl groups coming off. So this is gonna be a bulky base and a bulky substrate. So if you're looking at the beta hydrogen here, this is the one the base is going to try to pull off. It's very, very hard for that base to get in there and deprotonate. So it's just going to come here on the end, pick off the one that's easiest for it because it's so bulky, and that's going to give you the less substituted alkene, and this is going to be an E2 reaction because we have a strong base and a polar aprotic solvent. So this is the one weird situation where you're going to have um, the least substituted alkene favored. Here's another iClicker question for you to try. Keep in mind that in this one, um, depending on the mechanism, 
you may have to draw a Newman projection to try to figure out what the product of this reaction is. So give it a try and I'll go ahead and pause the video um, and then go ahead and pause the video and see if you got the right answer. Okay, so hopefully you correctly identified this as um, C, answer C. Now notice that you have a strong base and you have a polar aproic solvent, so this is gonna be an E2 mechanism. In an E2 mechanism, remember that the bromine and the beta hydrogen that are leaving have to be anti to each other. So we have to draw the Newman projection to figure out how to get this to occur. So let's look down this bond and we'll draw a Newman projection. So in this case, the bromine is going to be straight up and the methyl group is going to be on the right. And we also have a hydrogen on the left. Then um, we have in the back we're gonna have a hydrogen up, methyl group on the right, ethyl group on the left. So I'm gonna just draw it a little bit off center here so we have a staggered conformation. Here's the hydrogen and then methyl group on the right, ethyl group on the left. Okay, so here's one configuration, but the bromine here and the hydrogen are not anti to each other. So we need to draw another Newman projection. So I'm going to leave the front carbon the same. And now on the back carbon, I'm going to rotate this hydrogen down. And when I do that, that's going to rotate the methyl group over and the ethyl group over as well. Okay, so this is the conformation that is going to undergo E2 elimination. Notice that the bromine and the hydrogen are anti. And you can see here that they're, that's how they're gonna come off. So on this front carbon, you're going to have the hydrogen and the methyl group, right? Hydrogen and the methyl group. And the back carbon will have the methyl group and the ethyl group, methyl group and ethyl group. And notice that the ethyl group and the methyl group are on the same side, and this methyl group and this hydrogen are on the same side. So here's the methyl group and the hydrogen that are on the same side, and the ethyl group and the methyl group that are on the same side. So that's how you are able to identify the product of this reaction here. You really have to draw out the Newman projection, then pick the Newman projection where the leaving group and the hydrogen, the beta hydrogen are anti, and then use that to determine the outcome of the reaction. Okay, so let's give this, this one a try. And again, you may have to draw a Newman projection for this one if you're having some problems. So go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. Okay, so hopefully for this one you identified D. We have a strong base and we also have a polar aproduct solvent, so this will be an E2 mechanism. And if you were to draw the Newman projection, um, you'll get a configuration where the bromine and this and one of these hydrogens is opposite. And you're going to want to pick the most stable conformation in this instance or give you the trans alkene. So if we look at the two conformations, um, let's do that. You would have I'm going to look I'm going to look down this bond here. so we'll put the bromine in the front. And it doesn't matter which bond you look down, either one should be able to get you the correct answer. Okay, so here's the front carbon. And I'm gonna put a hydrogen here. And here's the back carbon. Okay, the other possible Newman projection is going to have the other hydrogen down or the, and the ethyl group on the opposite side. OK, 
Okay, so if you're looking at these two Newman projections, both of these Newman projections have the bromine and an anti-beta hydrogen. There's a bromine and an anti-beta hydrogen. So both of these can undergo E2. The most stable Newman projection is this one where the ethyl groups are farthest apart. Right? We only have a, an ethyl gauche interaction with the bromine. Up here we also have an ethyl ethyl gauche interaction. So this is the um, higher energy Newman. This is the lower energy Newman projection. This is the favored conformation. So this is the one that is going to lead to D here. And so hopefully that makes sense. Um, and if you have any, have any questions, just let me know. But the idea is, is that if you have two beta hydrogens, you're gonna pick the lowest energy Newman projection, whereas in the previous one, we only had one beta hydrogen. So we had, there was only one option that could lead to the correct product. Okay, so that's the end of this video. And then in the next video, we're gonna talk about how substitution and elimination compete in solution.